Yeah, welcome, welcome to this webinar. Uh, we're really excited to, to have all of you uh, joining us. Um, we're going to talk today about creating engaging and interactive online events using an online community. I'm here with uh, uh, Rachel Lawson, uh, liaison of the Drupal community, uh, Drupal Association. Sorry about that, uh, Rachel. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, indeed. Yeah. And Hopper Kalaf, uh, uh, CTO and co-founder of uh, WITS. Uh, really nice to have both of you uh, joining us for this webinar and uh, being able to share your experiences and, uh, and knowledge regarding uh, online events and, and online communities. Um, and, and myself, I'm uh, Bram Tenhoven, CTO at uh, Open Social. And uh, maybe good to start actually with a quick introduction of, of Open Social. Who, what, who are we? What do we do? And then uh, jump into, um, uh, into online events and online community. So Open Social is an uh, online uh, community software builder. So we build, uh, well, what is that like online community software? So in layman's terms, it's like your very own Facebook, uh, very own uh, uh, community. Uh, we are driven by open source technology. We also have our vision uh, to be pro-privacy, anti-monopoly, and, and really uh, in, in work on inspiring trusted connections and collaborations in an open web. So we really uh, focus uh, focus on that. And we really want to become the world's leading community engagement platform that grows with its ambitions of its users. And that's also one of the reasons why we have this webinar, as we're talking about uh, online events, which are very important also to uh, for community engagement and obviously uh, for, for growing uh, with the ambitions of, of our users. We work with uh, companies, uh, companies and organizations uh, throughout the world, United Nations, European Commission, uh, Bio, uh, Bio, which is a uh, biotechnology association, uh, FIFA, uh, and of course uh, a ton of other organizations. Um, there's some more information at Get Open Social to come. Uh, I won't go into too much detail now, but uh, if if you want to reach out and know a little bit more about this, then uh, go there and we'll be able to help you much further. Um, so what can you do with Open Social? We we really focus on like bringing people together online uh, in, in different ways, connecting them uh, with each other, but also being, be, uh, giving the opportunities to them to share knowledge, to share uh, uh, data about uh, about each other and, and really connect and collaborate with each other. Obviously, giving community managers and site managers the uh, the tools to be able to manage your community effectively uh, and also to activate and really engage with your members. In the end, what what we what we achieve try to achieve is uh, your success and driving your organizational goals, and hopefully also making a making a real world impact. Uh, uh, making the planet and the world uh, better through uh, through your organization. So, why did we add this feature to Open Social? Online events, um, online community software. We are able already to create events and and, and meet in person. Uh, we uh, can can comment on each other's uh, topics, uh, share knowledge with each other. But why do we want? Why do we want to add online events? So. If we look at events in, in general, they're, they're very important for engagement and, and for building relationships. So we've all had the, uh, well, the, the online events recently, right? In the, in the pandemic, we, uh, we had uh, conferences, uh, concerts, uh, even office meetings uh, replaced from in-person to uh, uh, online events. Some people have gotten Zoom fatigue. Uh, there's been back-to-back uh, -back meetings and uh, well, even studies showing that, that actually online events need to be structured properly in able to, uh, to do them effectively. But online events, we believe, are here to stay. Uh, they're key. Events are key for building uh, relationships with people, uh, getting to know each other uh, better, uh, sharing, sharing knowledge and deeds. Uh, connecting with each other and also talking about things that are uh, not work or work related or, or event related uh, and online events are an extension of in-person events that that's that's for sure but they're also able to replace in-person events 
Um, they're easy to join, right, from anywhere in the world. I can join. I'm currently in the Netherlands. I'm not sure where everybody here is actually from. I think uh, I think there are some people from uh, from the Middle East, uh, Asia, maybe uh, United States, uh, uh, maybe South America, Africa. So you're here from all over the world, and it's super easy to join from the comfort of your own home uh, office or wherever really, uh, even planes, uh, uh, boats, like it doesn't really matter anymore. Uh, we can all connect online uh, with each other. Also means that it's like, because of the internet, it's also much more scalable than in-person events. It's quite easy for 100 extra users or extra people, thousands, 10,000 uh, to, to join your online event in comparison to in-person events where you have to think about food, arrange uh, an, a, a space large enough to actually host these uh, people. Uh, therefore, in-person events are, are less scalable than, than online events. And online events are typically cheaper as well because of like the space and, and accommodation that you need to take care of. Um, but you know, like what is, what is really special about online events and, and why we added this also to open social is that we wanted to um, create a continuous conversation. When you have an event, um, an in-person event, then this is usually something that happens once a year, maybe twice a year, and it's for a couple of days, maybe one day even. And this is like really the moment that you're living, living up to or living towards. The conversation, unfortunately, usually stops there as well. Like there's a lot of knowledge sharing, a lot of uh, contributions between each other, connecting, uh, making the, the relationships, but it also often stops there. And that's that's a shame. So we thought as Open Social and, and together with uh, with Wits, uh, let's combine this. Let's let's take the community software that we already have, where we can connect with each other, uh, where we can share knowledge, and let's add like in-person events uh, or sorry, offline online events to these, uh, where we do usually these conferences and share knowledge, and connect them together so we can create this continuous conversation. So besides. Um, a one-time thing, we can actually talk uh, in a longer period about topics that, that are discussed during events uh, or topics uh, during the event or your organization goals. And people can find and, and even stay connected with attendees uh, that you met and connected with uh, during, the, during the event. So we think it's really cool. Um, and and also one other reason actually that that there are, there are several obviously that we probably will be discussing a little bit during the webinar. But one thing that that's also really nice I think is that is a much lower barrier uh, for people to join um, if you're already a member of a community and you just have the button to click join a meeting or join this event. It's much easier than setting up a Microsoft uh, Teams uh, application first. Uh, Zoom even, or or maybe some other obscure uh, uh, conference uh, conference tool, and it also prevents helps you to prevent uh, sending like these lengthy documentation to people. Uh, I don't think anyone likes that, and it's also uh, hard to read uh, sometimes. Um, yeah, so so a couple of things about that. I want to give the word also to Hotbar because he's going to tell us a little bit more about Big Blue Button, which we're actually using right now. Um, and how that uh, how that is a, an alternative to Zoom, and how we can how we can use that. Hoppa, can I give you the word? And you can take over the screen. Sure. Uh, thank you, Pram, uh, and thank you everyone for attending this uh, presentation. Uh, I hope you're enjoying it till now, and we're we're gonna dig deeper more into why Big Blue Button and why Zoom. What is the benefits from one software over the another? Uh, we'll see how uh, the other uh, uh, how uh, this platform would work with open social. Actually, the integration that we did before was uh, nicely integrated with um, the open social um, as well. Actually, we um, as Wits uh, developed also a solution for virtual events management, which I'm going to talk about in a bit. So, let me just switch the presentation to my presentation, and yeah. <clears throat> I think. Yes. Can you see it? Do you see how fast that was? I'm not sharing my screen in the first place. I just upload a presentation to the software and I can show it here without showing my screen. I can share the videos, which are features you can't find in Zoom. But this is just scratching the surface. 
basically, let me start by introducing myself. I am Hudba Khalaf. I'm a co-founder and CTO of WITS, Web Innovations and Technology Services. And uh, everyone is asking us basically what WITS means. So actually, we put it just there on our website. It's the capacity of innovative thoughts and quick understanding, keen intelligence. So we're trying to keep up with the new technology. We need to be witty about it. We need to, to just adapt it and just implement it in a way that satisfies any business needs of any size. Basically, what we do, we are a solutions provider. We provide solutions to people uh, that can satisfy uh, their, the, the new needs of the digital era, as we call it. You see, one pandemic just came here and the whole world just flipped around and everyone just wants to sit home, work from home and uh, do the webinars as we can see home, which is easier than ever before. And as Bram just mentioned before, this is meant to stay. This is not going away. Even some events will stay in a hybrid mode where people can go in person. A lot of them will just go in a hybrid mode as well if it's not fully digitalized. So people will say go, but the digital uh, meetings and conferences will, will, uh, are, is here to stay. So uh, our focus, we focus on learning and education. We focus on event management. We, we have um, um, uh, strategic um, uh, work with uh, government entities in uh, UAE in Dubai. And also we work with NGOs, uh, some international NGOs, local NGOs as well. This is the focus that we do. And the platform that we developed actually um, depended on Drupal. We're very enth enthusiastic about the Drupal, the open source and Myself, I'm in the community for like 13 years. I attended two uh, uh, conferences as well, uh, Drupal conferences. And myself, I'm into, op to, into the open source and the open source communities everywhere. And our platform, Alvance, depended on Drupal. And it took some amazing features also from uh, um, open social. We integrate all of that together. We just tailored this with integration with uh, virtual event solutions. Zoom and Big Blue Button, and we have a solution for virtual events management, like conferences, uh, webinars, and things like this. If you want to dig a bit deeper about the Big Blue Button, what is Big Blue Button? You need to think about it. It's a software. That software is an open source, so you can just take it and use it everywhere. And this is the beauty of it. Thousands of developers working from everywhere in the world towards one goal to satisfy a need that is well tested, that is secure, that anyone can use it for free if you have the server that you need to do it. And this is actually the main difference from Zoom. Zoom, you need to think about it as a brand. So um, a lot of people knows open social, but Drupal is known for developer communities because they are the ones who are using it. Big Blue Button, actually, it's the same. Zoom, it's a product, it's, it's there, people will use it and it has its own commercial commercial support. Big Blue Button is more open source. It's a software, you take it and you install it. Um, you need a, for sure a developer to help you set up the servers that you need, uh, but nevertheless, it will, it will remain for free. Your data will be yours. The main focus on Big Blue Button would be the virtual communities like open social, uh, the virtual events for sure. If you have an event of three, five, four days, um, you can, uh, host it there. Um, also education, a lot of schools, they're using Big Blue Button uh, to replace the direct uh, teaching or training. Some training centers, they do that as well. Um, uh, visual forums, also visual ex exhibitions as well, with integration with platforms like um, uh, the communities like Open Social that we have. So Big Blue Button is a software, it's an open source, you install it so you can use it for free. You just need to pay for the servers and to pay for a qualified developer to help you set up the big blue button. So um, what are the features? Big blue button has a lot of features that exceed Zoom, especially when it comes to the interactivity of it. Um, basically, it has everything that Zoom has. Uh, you can share your camera. Now I'm sharing mine. You can, uh, the microphone will be there. You can share your desktop as well. And um, you have this dashboard, and this dashboard actually is, is really nice. Here you can share the presentation. You can upload as many presentations as you want. And at now, Bram has his own presentation. When I just took uh, the, uh, um, I became the presenter, 
I just went there. I just said, I selected this presentation and voila, it's here. So this is one of the really nice features. Other features is sharing videos. So um, actually I did this presentation for the sake of people who are not attending the, the uh, webinar, while I intend to show you some of the features live, like now. So if I want to share an external video, let me find some open social videos on YouTube and we can share a video and that video will will work easily with no uh, um, interruption in Zoom or any other platform that you might have. Um, basically, you will you will need to share your screen and when you share your screen, uh, a lot of interruption to the video itself. Here, my good friend, Mores, and if I want just to, yeah, scroll in and out. If I want to stop it, I can control the video instantly from here. This is these type of features that Zoom, they're lacking. And it's not just Zoom. Actually, we did the integration with Zoom, but we see that people are going for more interactivity in this context. Let me go back to my presentation. Okay, uh, the other nice features that we might have is this. You see here, everyone is moving their their uh, mouses. If you press on the hand and you tick the pen, you can just try it here, whatever you want. So we everyone can share everything in here. So this is really nice. And when things get crowded for me, I just stop everyone and I can go back and back and back and I can delete everything. So these are some of the really nice features that you can find. Um, some of the other features, if you look at the three dots on the right upside, you can go and you can change the language. So if you're not speaking this language, you can go and there's 85 languages that you can switch to. Um, uh, another really nice feature, um, which is the closed captions. And closed captions, you remember the, the translation in the English movies? So when someone is speaking, there's a subtitle under it. It's exactly the same. This type of feature also, it doesn't, it's not working with, it's adopted by Zoom. I think they lately, they're working on it on extra cost, but here you can use this like really nice. So if I come and I start and I write, hello everyone, nice to meet you all. You see, these types of features that we like that Yes, there are some people putting a lot of efforts just to make this really friendly in a way. And all of these translations, they're downloadable, so I can download them and share them. The shared notes, a lot of features that we can uh, do here, but um, I'm not gonna go through all of them. You can try them here yourselves. Um, I would like to go to my next slide and start the comparison. And here by any mean, okay, I am an open source enthusiast but that doesn't mean I'm biased. I, on, uh, I always take um, evident proof facts and I build my judgment on top of them. And I'm not saying Zoom is bad by, by any means. Zoom has like many features and they're been used by corporates all over the world and their interruption of services is, is like really low and they can provide really nice um, uh, experience. But nevertheless, when there's facts, we need to discuss them in a way. Um, I'll start with privacy and security. Um, Big Blue Button is GDPR compliant. It's fully compliant with the uh, uh, user privacy and, and security. So your data is your property. No one can take it from you. It's actually on your own servers. So you put them there, you just lock the server, no one can access it. While on the other hand, Zoom, they're going with partially compliant with the GDPR. And I think this is because the European nations, they're pushing for companies to be aligned with that, to be compatible with the GDPR. So when I went there and, and uh, I checked their, their privacy policy, they're saying GDPR applied only to Europe. So if I'm here in Dubai, I'm not in Europe, they can't guarantee my privacy. And this is something that for some organizations, it's critical. Um, another thing is the, the technology they're using. Here in Big Blue Button, we're using the um, uh, browser. So it's within the browser with SSL certificates. The security is guaranteed in a way. There's no um, uh, anyone in the middle to do this. While Zoom also, 
Uh, you can use Zoom through the website, but it's their own servers. They have their own apps. And I actually, I found a, an article talking about Zoom malware, like the software itself can be used to record videos, to record audios, similar to the um, Siri uh, scandal that happened with Apple like uh, um, eight months ago. Um, censorship. Also, there is no censorship using SSL, HTTPS. No one can, uh, it's an encrypted data between you and your server. Uh, Zoom, I found allegations um, that uh, accused them for uh, doing some censorship. And actually, they stopped a, we um, a webinar for them. Uh, that webinar is talking, uh, the subject of the webinar was uh, Zoom censorship. So just blocked that one. And I found it like really weird. You know, why, guys? You don't need to be so obvious. Just do it under the table. <laughs> Anyhow, um, the uh, encryption method um, here, it's like a public known to everyone, TLS, end-to-end -end encryption, they're using their own stuff. Um, I'm not saying it's bad, it's secure for sure. M millions of people, they're using Zoom, but nevertheless, it's like a black box in a way. You'll never know what's happening on those servers. So privacy and security, I would say big blue button wins. Um, if we talk about the Zoom, um, uh, the live session itself, um, here it comes the limitation of big blue button. Uh, we can have 100 attendee per live session. If we mute the the uh, microphone, it can go to, um, uh, sorry, if we uh, disable the chat, it can go to 140. Actually, the new version of big blue button, which 2.3, it will be released in a week. And that one raised this number to 300. So they are always working to enhance the services to, uh, um, to respond to the new demands in the market. Um, Zoom meetings, on the other hand, they, pro, they have like packages, Pro 100, Business 300, and um, uh, they have United Business, it's also 300. Nevertheless, they have their own uh, licenses that you need to use in this context. And these licenses can vary um, between Zoom webinars, Zoom uh, large meetings, uh, that can go up to 1,000, and I think the webinar can go up to 5,000 attendees at the same time. Uh, the concurrent session, um, if, you are, if you have like one Zoom license, you can do one meeting at a time. If you have 10, you can do 10 meetings at the same time. With Big Blue Button, you don't have that. The capacity of the server of Big Blue Button can go to 400 um, uh, attendees all over the sessions. Uh, and you can use a cluster to use multiple servers. So it depends here on the hardware. Um, the Zoom is limited by license, so you need to pay more and more and more for each license that you acquire. Um, if you want to uh, take the uh, 100 license per year, it will cost you $20,000 just for licensing. Um, uh, recording and storage, also uh, Zoom, you know, uh, they're commercial, they have limitations. Um, here, um, they have like one gig uh, for pro license, one, one gigabyte for the business. Also here on Big Blue Button, it's your data, it's your server. Plug another another hard disk, and you will get a, as many recordings as you want. And there's no limitation on how long they're gonna stay. Um, another thing we're talking about the features. We've seen some of these features. But I'll focus on the things that Zoom does not have. Um, here we have a small smart polls, which means within the presentation itself, if you have a sentence and there's a question mark and there is multiple choices under it, Big Blue Button will understand this is a question and it will pop up the question for you. So this is what we call smart polls. Um, and also we have ordinary polls um, that you can start it from the system. On Zoom, you need to go to the website, prepare, those polls ahead and then use them within your meeting. You can't just create a poll uh, instantly. Um, the whiteboard that we have here and the multi-user whiteboard. I'm, I'm not gonna take much time. You can, you can see all of these features. We've, we've tested most of them. Um, the last thing is best fit. And I think this is the important one. Um, we see like uh, big blue buttons is, is really feasible for uh, organizations that they care about their privacy, small that have less than 50 sessions or big, they have more than 10 sessions at concurrent sessions. Um, interactive features, if you're working 
for interactive features, big blue button is yours. If you are more formal, it's one, it's just a communication, then Zoom will be um, your tool. I think I just packed everything in, in really short time. So I hope I'm not uh, uh, fast enough. Uh, um, I'm, I'm clear enough with this. So yeah, if you have any questions or maybe later on, I'm open to them. Cool, Th thanks a lot, Hotma. Uh, yeah, I think we can take a couple of questions later on. I think we have a block of, um, a block of a section where we can uh, ask some of the questions. We already had some actually in the public chat, so that's really cool. Um, we can uh, we can talk about, talk talk about those in a, in a second. What I uh, what I would like to do is uh, uh, ask uh, Rachel to share maybe a little bit about her experience uh, recently uh, with using Open Social and uh, Big Blue Button because um, you organized an online online event. Uh, can you can you share us a little bit about that and your experiences? Yes, yes. Thank you, Ram. Um, so DrupalCon is a event, the key um, event for the Drupal community, uh, Drupal being an open source uh, software uh, project, which is used by lots of things, including uh, open social. Um, and we have, over the last year or so, had to pivot from in-person events twice a year to running virtual events. Now, whilst the main part of the conference in terms of the sessions, we were using a, another package, what we wanted to do is have something separate for those people who wish to work on contributing to the Drupal open source software. Um, we had a series of afternoons during the conference week at DrupalCon this year where we dedicated time specifically for people to come and contribute to, pro to the project. Now, we wanted to do that separate from the main soft from the main conference site, because anyone is invited. You do not have to have a DrupalCon ticket to contribute to Drupal. That would be strange. Um, so we spoke with the people at Open Social and we built a open social site, which allowed us to create spaces specifically around some strategic initiatives related to how we're pushing the Drupal project forwards. Then we were able to lay out within there various different topics related to different parts of those initiatives, things that people would be working on so that they could gather around topics and discuss them. And we were able to set up events using Big Blue Button, which would act as a central hub, a reception area, if you like, for the leaders of each strategic initiative to hang out, answer questions, help people get involved, suggest things that people might want to work on, help people make those first steps into contributing to the project. Um, so we set this up and we were really pleased to see hundreds of people join. Uh, I think 300 and some uh, were actually within the contribution area uh, and signed up to that contribution area uh, during the week. And we started and we ran the first day and we learned some lessons and we changed. One of the great things that we found was the combination of open social and big blue button was really quite flexible. We were able to take what we'd done on the first day, find any challenges that we had, not with the technology, but with the process of introducing people to contribution, change how we were presenting ourselves bringing in things like breakout rooms, which were really useful, uh, and being able to name those breakout rooms and move people around between them. We were able to do that and bring in these things, so we were able to change our process for helping people get involved in contributing to the Drupal project throughout the week. And it was really easy to do. Um, what we found was we were able to change things quite easy, 
we were able to set things up so that when the meeting ended or when somebody left the meeting at the end of the day, they could be redirected to a page which said things that they could be doing later, which was really useful. Um, and we were able to uh, keep, let people also not just be actively involved in contribution, but one of the things that we're learning at the moment is that, especially in a virtual environment, when you've got something interactive, quite often the first time people want to come along, they just want to watch. They don't necessarily want to actively participate straight away. And one of the things we discovered with Big Blue Button is it actually makes it really easy for people to be able to just sit back and go, hey, I'm just listening here. I'm not really wanting to be active. And it's fairly easy for the people who are trying to run the show to see that somebody's just got their headphones on and not a microphone. I'm looking at the icons on the left-hand side right now. And I can see people like uh, uh, Andre there and Amy June. Uh, it's got headphones marked so that they're not connected to the microphones. And you can see that they're not going to be coming up on the screen and probably wanted to take a slightly further step back and not be part of uh, what's going on on screen all the time, which is really useful. Helps make those separate separations, which is really great. Um, so we run the conference. We, we had a lot of good feedback. We've got some things that we want to change. Uh, we have a, a nice contribution site now connected in with Big Blue Button, as I say. And one of the things we want to be able to do now is make it so that someone can log in using their Drupal identity rather than have all these different identities in different places. Now, because this is open source, we'll be able to do that. We'll be able to integrate it with Drupal.org and be able to connect that uh, in the future so that someone can just go, I am Rachel Larson, I'm called Rachel Not. Rachel Norfolk, as I'm known on, on Drupal, um, and, and I, I'm auto, automatically connected. I'm not having to remember passwords, IDs, and all that type of thing. It also means that I can trust when I see someone on hit on the contribution site says that they're Amy June, then I know they're the same Amy June that I know in Drupal.org, which is really useful for maintaining some levels of things like codes of conduct and so on. You know who people are. We wouldn't be able to do that in Zoom. If someone says who they are, you just have to believe them. Yeah, uh, which is challenging on occasions. So yeah, I'm really pleased. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to the next time we do something and coming back with more feedback and changing some more and then iterating over this over the rest of the year. Awesome. Thanks a lot, uh, Rachel, for sharing uh, some experience. So, um, so I also, also had a co couple of questions uh, that I that I wanted to ask you regarding this because you, well, you've been using this for actually uh, uh, a couple of days uh, very actively. Uh, uh, it was actually in April, I believe, that uh, that this event took place. So it, you yeah. already had a little bit of time to also look at hey, what are the learnings actually indeed, like you just shared. So that was uh, very interesting. Thanks. Um, so, so one of my questions was like, why did you end up using Open Social for this event instead of indeed like just doing a series of video call events, like uh, like is also quite common nowadays. Uh, the main reason is I wanted to be able to guide people. I wanted to be able to take people on a journey so that they could learn what they're doing. Uh, one of the challenges when you're trying to organize an event where people are going to learn something and do something that's new. You want them to remember how to do the thing you want them to learn and not spend half of their life learning how to work the technology that allows them to do the learning. Yeah. So we wanted to get to a situation where being able to put down loads of content, and create a, a, a route through to where people needed to be that was as simple as possible and also 
wasn't causing them to be looking for links randomly in some email or wherever. Yeah, it was in one place. Everything was together. It was always consistent across each day. Um, and it will always be consistent if they go to the next event where we use the same platform and the event after that. So it's a consistency thing. It's a make it easy for people to do the do the work of getting to the room, not spending their time doing that because you want them to put the effort into learning how to make Drupal better. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. I've been I've been joining the contribution days of of uh, Drupal conferences in the past as well, and uh, like it's usually a very big uh, room with a lot of people there at different tables. So it can also be quite hard to find your the table you want to join and initiative you want to, you want to join and, and work on. So I, you mentioned that there were like over three hundred people joining these uh, mm, these yeah. contributions. Yeah. Um, what what was their reaction? in comparison to indeed having like this in-person uh, 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 contribution part uh, where you sat at a table? Well, I think the, the best way to to judge that, uh, we had lots of feedback, you know, things that we can improve and things that we can, you know, sort of change slightly, of course. But we had lots of people saying it was a great platform. We've got people that saying they want to use it again. And we've got people from other Drupal related events saying, can we use your platform? Now, as far as I'm concerned, that's success. Another way that we like to measure as the Drupal core mentoring coordinators, how do we like to measure success of a contribution event? We don't necessarily measure the success in terms of the number of people who turn up. Actually, that doesn't matter. What matters is who turns up to continue work in the weeks and months afterwards. Now, what we're seeing from DrupalCon um, is a great amount of success there. We're seeing people who've never contributed to Drupal before who are now getting involved. I noticed there's a strategic initiative that we've got called Easy Out of the Box. And I've noticed that we've got uh, somebody who's never contributed to Drupal before, Jessica, I think is her name. And she's now helping to run their meeting. She's a project manager. She's not a, she's not a, a coder. She's a project manager and she's helping run meetings. And she's doing that every two weeks. I'm sure I'm about to be corrected, but this is amazing. We, we've actually captured somebody, we've inspired them, and they're now participating. Uh, that is a big deal. If we can do more of that, then we know we're onto a success. Cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that if, if you're able to capture people and, and they want to work ahead and, and continue working on this contribution, that that's the best uh, best part. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, so, so you mentioned also that you changed some of the processes uh, according to the feedback you got. And, and, and um, can you tell me a little bit about your expectations that you had in the, like beforehand, and, and how that changed during, uh, well, during the, the the progression of the contribution? Yeah, of course. So, my my personal kind of Im when I was imagining how this would work beforehand, I I had this plan where. People would come into the, into the platform. We would have a reception area where people could come to and find something to work on, you know, chat to people, ask questions and so on. But then leave that area, go to a series of, in open social, there is a concept of topics, which are nodes that are in there with information in them. And then each node would say, we are collaborating either in a meeting or, or on the platform or a meeting in Zoom with a link or we're working in Slack, just using text. And it would be that would be on a per topic basis. And I was thinking of the topics as the tables that you get in a, in a in-person DrupalCon event, the big round wedding tables, as I think of them as. Um, and that was my imagination. What we found was 
once people came into the reception area, they wanted to stay in the reception area. They wanted that immediate um, visual connection with each other like, we, like we're having now. Um, so we used that and we, we mixed things up and we started making the reception area into a breakout room system. Um, and then people were hanging about in there more. We were getting some people, probably more the, how should we say, come along every year to, to contribution type people who would work separately, but uh, using the topics and working on text on Slack or whatever. But uh, more and more of the new people wanted the immediate face-to-face, -face, virtual face-to-face -face experience. So that's what we did, yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I think uh, that that's maybe something Hotbar hasn't been, haven't showed us yet, but there's definitely the possibility also to to have these breakout rooms, which I think is actually super super helpful, uh, not just for conferences, but in general for events where you just want to take a sidetrack quickly on on a topic with someone instead of uh, uh, discussing it with uh, 50, 60 people in a in a session uh, like 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 this actually. So uh, yeah. Super awesome. Hey, um, um, so so we used and, and Hoppa also showed like a couple of features uh, of, of Bitcoin Button. Which, which were the most used ones for for these DrupalCon uh, contributions? Was it in the like called a breakout room, or or did we already use, also use like whiteboard or other other tools? I think breakout room was the big was the big one. Um, I know that. Uh, the session recording was really useful. I know that um, by a complete surprise, because I didn't actually want to, when we set up the system, I didn't actually know it did session recording, but there you go. But <laughs> it was uh, the decoupled menus team. They said af they said afterwards that they, they recording and recorded one of their events. And I was like, great. I didn't even know it could do that. Um, and... It was it was really useful because um, one of your team uh, was able to make sure that once the session had finished, instead of having the join room button that you that we all came here by, um, next to that, once they'd finished, there was a button where you could just go watch the video, and that was really great. People were able to go watch that video, and I was surprised because it wasn't just a video, it was kind of an amount, it was almost like a, a re-roll of the Big Bleak Button session. So the text was still text, even though it was replaying the video, you could select the text that was in the uh, the pieces. It was, it was magic, it was kind of weird. Uh, <laughs> but... <laughs> It, it, it was like, you know, you'd have the faces, but the text, you, you would have the public chat and stuff moving and you could actually use that for things, which is really interesting. Um, I can see that being useful. Uh, but uh, I'd, be, I'd be interested. I, I, I can imagine a situation in the future. Maybe there is a opportunity for being able to search against text that's happened in a session. Uh, that's being recorded. That would be interesting. <laughs> Absolutely, indeed. Yeah. Bit, bit of a feature request, though, but so, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. One one very interesting feature that we're working uh, on now is streaming. So uh, we're using a third party like YouTube, and you can stream from here or from the YouTube through Big Blue Button. So it's vice versa. It's either from here to to YouTube or Facebook, or using a stream server, and then you can have like thousands of people attending through Big Blue Button. But this will take like three four months, hopefully. So yeah, these these are nice features to to have. And but, but this one that you mentioned, I'll definitely will share with the community soon. Awesome. Thanks, Abba, for your. Uh... Additional information as well. Um, so, so one of the things that that we mentioned also in the beginning is that like online events are replacing uh, to some degree at least uh, in in person events. Um, but it's and, and also because it's 
um, you're able to have this continuous conversation, or at least you can have the ability to do that. Um, so fr from your experience, like organization like Drupal Association, um, how can you use these virtual events and open social to um, indeed connect with attendees over a longer period of time? You already mentioned something, but could you maybe elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, so what I know now from running Drupal contributions uh, on open social is that because we know who came to the event, they were registered to the event, they had a role enrolled to the event, we can communicate with them afterwards. Uh, in fact, there's actually a tooling to be able to do that, to send emails to people who came along to things, which is really useful because these are people who've shown an interest in contributing to the project. And we can say to them now, hey, there's another opportunity for contribution coming up in a few weeks. Would you be interested? Which is the best way? Blah, 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 that type of thing. So we have an ongoing conversation because they're in a platform rather than being just a one-off. Um, there's also the opportunity that once they participated in an event, if we've got the permissions correct, then the next stage in the sort of somebody's Drupal contribution career, for want of a better description, is to move from participating in an event to organizing an event. And if we can help someone to feel that they have that ability to do that, if they have that ability to say, hey, if I gather a few people together and say, well, let's have a contribution event, if I can make it easy for them to do that, and essentially by making it easy, give them permission, whatever you, you like, to say, hey, go do it. If you want to have a contribution event, all the tooling is there. It's really easy for you to do it then this is where we want to get to. We want somebody to feel that they can go do that anytime they like, get people together, say, hey, we're gonna have an event, bang, they can do it. Now I know that it's easy to organize events on the platform because I had to do it, yeah? Um, in fact, at one stage, we had a situation where we wanted to have a quick a quick conversation just between the contribution mentors and I set up an event whilst I was away from my house and I did it on my phone yeah I, I created an event on my phone said yeah I want big blue into integration bang done and it was done and I could then invite people along so if I can do that on my phone without too much worries, then it means that it's an easy thing to do. And that's why we want to be. Cool. F thanks for sharing. Uh, we, we have some minutes left, so maybe I want to go to some of the public public questions that were asked, actually. Um, so let me actually take presenter, see if I can do that. And then uh, this doesn't really matter too much. So um, yeah, so there were actually a couple Quite a few uh, questions uh, asked uh, in the, in the public chat. So maybe start with a question from Salim uh, Lakani. Uh, what's the relationship between Open Social and Big Blue Button? Uh, I think it's a, a quick one. Uh, open Social is uh, open source technology. Uh, we also have a SaaS uh, version of, uh, uh, for this. Uh, Big Blue Button is also open source. There is no direct relationship with us, but uh, through our partner uh, Wits with uh, Hotba here presenting uh, presenting as well, we integrated Big Blue, Big Blue Button in in Open Social. Um, one other question um, um, for maybe also from Salim, uh, maybe Hotba, you can answer that one. Uh, can you run Big Blue Button on AWS Lightsail or or AWS yourself? Or do you need to set up set it up in a different uh, or in a specific cloud uh, cloud hosting environment? Yeah, actually, there is no uh, specification. It works out of the box. You just need a Linux uh, machine. But there is some some um, uh, limitation that you need to worry about the hardware. So a specific memory size, a specific processing size, because this is a real time application. So 
uh, now we're streaming from the three cameras to 22 attendees. So you can imagine the amount of data that is going. So you need like um, a high performance hardware. You can install it on, on AWS for sure, but um, AWS with virtual, if you talk about um, um, EC2, which is um, a shared uh, kind of virtual machine, we prefer to have like a, a metal box that will have like a reserved performance for yourself. It's not like virtual machine with shared, it might have some interruptions. Uh, there's some some specification that we can talk about but, yeah, um, later on. So this is an overview. Um, you can run it, but we prefer the metal box. This is the advice. Cool. Um, another question from uh, from John about uh, CC. There are actually a couple of questions about uh, the, the closed captions. Um, does it work? From voice instead of typing, I think there were a couple of uh, couple of questions about that. Yeah, no, actually, it's it needs a professional translator who will sit and write. This is how it goes, for for the time being. So that would be during the during the event, and you can yeah, you actually, can yeah, there. during the event, you have a translator who will write, and then this translation will appear to people. It's not like a, a voice to text service. It's not like this. Um, it needs someone behind some of the moderators will go and they will write whatever they're translating, let's say. Check. Okay. Yeah. And, and because it's open source, anyone can contribute to having a, a machine learning or, or connecting that to an uh, instant uh, service, right? For sure. If anyone can, uh, can jump in, we'll, we're more than happy to, uh, to have you. The power of open source. Awesome. Um, so, uh, one other question uh, about from Salim here with uh, uh, Open Social. If it's come, if it comes pre-integrated with Big Blue Button, uh, no. So that currently we have Big Blue Button as an as a service uh, for for our SaaS version, specifically because we need to have this uh, uh, server maintenance and setting up these servers. Uh, we maintain that together with uh, with Bits. Um, Maybe one more question. Let me see which one uh, here. Actually, Salim as well. A uh, quick one. Uh, does OpenSocial have event listings and event registrations? So, so yes. Uh, it's also what, what Rachel mentioned is that you can create an event. Uh, you can have a list of, of who attended or who's going to attend and reached out to them afterwards. Uh, or, or before the event, uh, reach out to them via email or in the event itself via comments. Uh, so you can follow up uh, with people um, uh, after the event via email, but also have them share their experience on the platform. And that's where the cool stuff is, is able to, to happen, it's where you can have this continuous conversation uh, as, as might also be possible to, uh, uh, to do later on. And I think, uh, with with the ability of of, of using OpenSocial for the DrupalCon contributions and having uh, having that for more than just the DrupalCon, I think that's also really really nice to combine that. Um, yeah, Victor Nedelchev, uh, question: Is it possible to have automated automated chat managers like bots that can follow commands and execute simple tasks? Maybe one for Hotba. I can't hear you, Hapa. We, we can't hear you, sorry. Well, we'll, we'll have to see if we can uh, maybe ask it, it of answer it in the public chat, uh, do it like that, and we can uh, share, share that uh, later on. Um, Maybe with, uh, with with three minutes left, I can share you a little bit about um, uh, quick. Ah, sorry, I think I hear. I'm hearing you again. Hoppa. No, I am not hearing you again. Sorry, <laughs> no problem. Okay, so maybe to conclude uh, uh, this webinar, I can share you a quick thing about the Open Social Roadmap with some relevant features, also uh, uh, similar as um, as the online events. So we're working actually over the coming coming few months to add a couple of awesome features to open social so one of one of them is organization profiles which allows you to create your own organizations add members to it have some management feature for that 
Um, and that allows you to make clear to community members who your organization is, have some promotional tools regarding that and promote it across the community. So this can be helpful, especially in business to business uh, setting. Um, or if you have um, uh, sponsors for your event, then this is also a nice way to, to do that. Uh, membership payments, which is also a nice one for uh, associations, for example, where you can have an additional revenue stream for your organization, where you can charge for uh, uh, memberships uh, or, for example, one-time tickets for an online event, for example. So these can be uh, integrated with payment providers. And last but not least is in an improved native app. So we have already a native app at Open Social. Uh, your members are o o mobile first as well. So uh, we're currently creating a completely new version of that. Uh, also to help you with uh, uh, engagement and uh, ease of access for, for some of these uh, events and, and your community. If you want to reach out to us about uh, online events or, or open social in general, uh, feel free to contact us via getopensocial.com. We're happy to share uh, you a demo um, and, uh, and, and get you up to speed with our organization and what we can do for, for your use case. Last but not least, I want to thank, uh, thank Hotba uh, for your presentation, for your knowledge and sharing that with us. And obviously, Rachel, uh, thank you very much for uh, for your sharing your experience with DrupalCon contribution and uh, attending uh, attending this session. Thank you. And yeah, obviously you. everyone that, uh, that joined uh, today or is gonna view uh, the recording afterwards, thank you for listening in and uh, uh, hope to talk to you uh, at a later moment. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you.